Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Today we are going to talk about how to conduct confirmatory factor analysis using Jamovi and a little bit of Excel. So short background lang before I am start with this discussion. I'm not going to talk about exploratory factor analysis because sa tingin ko that is beyond my expertise. Hindi pa ako masyadong confident in my skills conducting exploratory factor analysis or EFA. But I have prior experience in doing confirmatory factor analysis, particularly in my graduate, in my master's thesis, as well as in the other studies that I am conducting right now. Okay, and today I want to share to you, no, my viewers, ano ba yung mga usual na steps na susunusundan in order to check the validity of an instrument or a psychological test using CFA. Okay, so let us now begin before I demonstrate to you how to do CFA. First, let's have a quick discussion. So what is confirmatory factor analysis? For those who, who do not have a good foundation about CFA, I hope that this short lecture will help you. So CFA is a way of testing how well-measured variables represent a smaller number of constructs. Okay, so... What does that mean? What does that imply? No? So in CFA, di ba marami tayong mga items sa survey. Kunyari, may survey ka sa thesis mo, no? it's 1 to 10, it's 1 to 25. Ang tawag sa mga yan, mga measured variables. Or in some cases, mga observed variables. Or we call them indicators. And we assume that these indicators measure something that we're interested in measuring. We call these constructs. We call these mga um, psychological constructs, no? mga variables we're interested in. For example, happiness, depression, anxiety. So we want to measure these constructs. And for us to measure these constructs, what we do is that we create a test and then we believe that the way a, the responses of a person on that test reflects his or her assessment kung gaano siya ka-depressed, ka-anxious, kasaya, and so on. Because there are many constructs out there. Okay, so UCFA, ginagamit natin siya to determine how well our items are, um, gaano ka-accurate yung mga items natin in measuring the constructs that or the construct that we want to measure. Okay, gaano ba ka-ganda yung quality ng test o ng scale mo? particularly if you created your own test or psychological test. Okay? So as mentioned, CFA is one way to determine or examine the validity of an instrument or a test or a scale. And validity as defined in psychology is the answer to the question, does the test measure what it is supposed to measure? Nasusukat ba niya yung dapat niyang sukatin? And when we say that a test is valid, we believe that it is an accurate measure of the construct we're interested in measuring. All right? Particularly today, we are going to focus on convergent validity, which can be established in, in numerous ways. But today, I'm just going to focus on establishing convergent validity or examining convergent validity using confirmatory factor analysis. And I will follow the definition of Hare and colleagues 2010. They said that convergent validity is the extent to which a specific construct converge or share a high proportion of variance in, in common. Okay? In plain language, lahat ba ng items mo? No? Do they measure the same construct? If you have 10 items measuring happiness, do they all measure happiness? Are they accurate indicators of happiness? All right? Anyway, moving forward. So a short background about psychological measurement theory. So in psychology, in psychological testing, we believe that there are a lot of constructs out there like happiness, life satisfaction, well-being, anxiety, depression. And not all constructs are directly observable. No? We cannot directly observe constructs. Some, some of them are not tangible. Some of them are not visible. Like you cannot directly see 
uh, the anxiety that a person is feeling unless may mga physical symptoms but sometimes no may mga symptoms yan or may mga nararamdaman yung tao that we cannot directly see okay we cannot directly see the happiness of a person it's not directly measurable we cannot use a ruler to measure your happiness but we believe that psychological tests can measure the happiness of a person so that is the that is why we use CFA to make sure that the items we have constructed to measure happiness are doing their job, which is measuring happiness. Okay, we cannot directly observe constructs, but we believe that we can measure them using psychological tests. So we assume, no, ina assume natin that the way the person responds to item one, item two, item three is an indicator of his or her level of life satisfaction. We may not be able to directly measure a person's life satisfaction, what, but we believe that we can measure a person's life satisfaction by administering, for example, the satisfaction with life scale, which is composed of five items. So kung paano mag-respond si respondent or si participant on those five items is assumed to be a measure of his or her life satisfaction. Okay, so for example, so life satisfaction scale by Diener and colleagues, 1985, it is composed of five items. We do not directly ask, are you happy? Are you satisfied? But instead, we ask things like, in most ways, my life is close to my ideal. Do you agree with that or not? The conditions of my life are excellent. I'm satisfied with my life. No? So there are five items, and we assume that how a person responds to these five items is an indicator of his or her life satisfaction. Okay? Now, to establish the validity of these items, we run confirmatory factor analysis for us to determine if all of them are psychometrically worthy. Should we retain them in the test? Na may measure ba niya yung happiness? Okay, sometimes we call psychometric properties test worthiness. No? Yung mga items ba na yung worthy ba sila? To be retained. Do they really do their job, which is measuring happiness? Baka kasi si number one, it can measure happiness, pero si two, hindi pala. Okay, so how do we answer that, sir? Then we do confirmatory factor analysis. Okay. So before the demonstration, I just want you to know the difference between unidimensional and multidimensional construct. So kapag sinabi natin unidimensional construct, it is a construct that is only composed of a single factor or a single dimension, hence the name unidimensional. And it is believed that all of these five items measure the same construct. Okay, lahat sila, measure nila yung life satisfaction. Yan ang unidimensional. So most tests, not really most, but a lot of tests out there are... Um, Unidimensional. For example, in my thesis, I use the peace of mind scale, and we believe that all seven items in the peace of mind scale measure the construct of peace of mind. There are no underlying factors, no other factors, just only one factor, peace of mind. On the other side of the equation, we also have what we call multidimensional constructs. That's why there are multidimensional scales. Like in my thesis, I use the the measure of perfectionism by Frost or the short version by Burgess and colleagues. And according to their conceptualization, there are two dimensions of perfectionism, positive strivings and evaluation concerns. Okay, so according to, to the literature, it is best to think of perfectionism as a bidimensional construct instead of a unidimensional construct. So there are two components positive strivings and evaluation concerns okay so in that in those kinds of situations in those instances hindi na tayo naniniwala that all items measure the same construct but instead we believe that some items measure or belong to a certain dimension while some items belong to another dimension for instance factor 1 is composed of four items in our slide while factor two is also composed of another set of four items. Okay, we call them subscales, subfactors, or 
multi eto yung mga multidimensional measures no may mga subscales no may mga scale na ganyan hindi lang isa yung sinusukat marami yang mini measure so pwede ring gamitan na CFA yan pero instead na isang factor lang dalawa na or tatlo depending on the test de- depending on the number of factors anyway so for today i'm going to focus on the assessment of convergent validity and i propose that we follow these steps and my main reference is the textbook of hair at al 2010 right so ito yung apat nating susundin na steps no the first step is that we should assess the standardized factor loadings in jamovi i will be using jamovi in today's demonstration then i will teach you how to compute for the composite reliability i will also teach you how to compute for the average variance extracted and finally for we are going to assess the model fit Okay, you can also do the same with AMOS or with Smart PLS, but I do not use Smart PLS, and I think for some beginners, AMOS is quite complex. So for today, I'm just going to focus on Jamovi because Jamovi is free. I think it's accessible to everyone. Everybody can download Jamovi, but AMOS is not free. So I would guess not all of my listeners no have access to AMOS. So I'm going to be using Jamovi no in today's demonstration. First step is to assess the standardized factor loadings. Later in the demo, I'll teach you how to look for the standardized factor loadings in the in the CFA um, in the confirmatory factor analysis. But according to the according to here and colleagues, all indicators should load significantly onto their respective constructs, and specifically, the factor loading should be at least 0.5 or ideally 0.7. The higher, the better. If the factor loading is lower than 0.5, for example, 0.2, 0.3, or 0.4, then it means that the item is not really doing its job, which is to measure what you want to measure. Maybe it's measuring something else, or maybe it does not capture the construct that you want to measure, the one you're interested in. So in those instances, if the item's loading is below 0.5, you have a reason to delete the item from your instrument. Okay, so I'm talking to those who are doing their, who are doing a research, no, um, who are developing a test right now, or who are borrowing scales, and then you notice that not all items in the scales measure what they were supposed to measure. So you can drop them from the analysis if you can prove that the factor loadings are lower than 0.5. And also aside from the from the factor loadings we should also look at the p value of the factor loadings it should be significant less than 0.05 okay in some instances there are situations where in the factor loading is lower than 0.5 but since it is significant the researcher may decide to still retain them okay so sometimes it's up to you okay but ideally it should be at least 0.05 and uh, it should be at least 0.5 and should be statistically significant Now, for the composite reliability, the value should be at least 0.7 or higher, and then this is the formula that we'll be using. So later on, I will show you how I obtain the composite reliability. So to to compute for the CR, what you have to do is to get the summation of the standardized loadings in all the items and to square that value. And we are also concerned with the measurement error in this formula. So later, I'm going to show you how how i got the composite reliability and also if you will check the papers out there they're also utilizing or reporting the average variance extracted or the ave the ave value should be at least 0.5 or higher okay so so to so to get the ave what you have to do is to get the summation of standardized factor loading or sorry of the squared loadings so this is not the same with what i showed in the previous slide When we say summation of standardized loading squared, you have to get the sum of the loadings first before you square it. Okay? But in the AVE, what you have to do is to square each loading before you get the sum of the squared loadings. So, um, please be careful. No? You might be confused when you do the analysis. And to get the AVE, you have to divide the value that you obtained by the number of items. And finally in the last step we will be assessing the convergent validity by looking at the fit indices 
Okay, so for those who read a lot of research online, so you might observe that they report the fit indices. So according to Hare and colleagues and to other references, the fit indices that we use, that we can use are the following. So first, the, the chi-square, we are specifically concerned with the p-value of the chi-square. It should be non-significant. We are also concerned with the CFI, which is the most widely used fit index in CFA um, in a lot of published empirical works. So the value of the CFI should be at least 0.90, ideally at least 0.95. And the TLI should also be at least 0.90 and ideally at least 0.95. Okay. Well, the RMSEA and the SRMR values should not be greater. No, they should be less than 0 0.08 for us to say that the model fits the data well. Okay, so ito yung mga basis natin. Aside from the standardized loadings, the composite reliability, the AVE, it should also have good fit indices. Okay, so for today's demonstration, we are going to be testing the validity using CF, um, confirmatory factor analysis or CFA. We are going to assess the validity of the implicit theories of intelligence scale by Carol Dweck, 1999. I also use this as in my master's thesis. And according to Dweck, there are two theories of intelligence, and these are entity theory and incremental theory. So what is entity theory? That is the belief that intelligence is fixed. So some people believe that their intelligence is fixed. It's either you're intelligent or not. There's nothing you can do about it. Conversely, there are people who adopt the incremental theory, which is the belief that intelligence is malleable. So you believe that you can continually improve your skills if you adopt the incremental theory. And in this eight item scale, it is believed that items one, two, four, and six measure entity theory, while items three, five, seven, and eight measure the extent to which you espouse or endorse incremental theory.